You're back on Global Business Report. At the World Economic Forum, business leaders say the growing world food crisis is leading to protectionist moves by countries and could lead to a wider trade war. Gita Gopinath, the first deputy managing director at the IMF, says that, that in sub-Saharan Africa, 40% of our consumption is spent on food and prices have, uh, risen, to, and, uh, have risen and have given rise to hoarding by governments. According to Gopinath, over 20 countries have put restrictions on exports of food and fertilizers, making things worse. Okay, let's uh, cross to Davos, Switzerland now for more updates on the week-long World Economic Forum activities. Our Rice International correspondent is on the street of uh, Davos. Adifemi Akisonya, uh, it's good to see you. Thank you so much for coming through this morning. Trade is on the agenda today. The Director General of the World WTO, Dr. Ngozi Konjewala, will be speaking. What can we expect to hear from her as per global trade and food? All right, Sibos, and it's definitely getting a bit more exciting now when we look at the press conferences that are happening today. As you correctly noticed, I am outside. I wanted to give you a little bit of variety. <laughs> you know, we spent a lot of time indoors, wanted to show you the beautiful Swiss Alps behind me. But beautiful. when we are looking at what we're expecting out of the press conference this evening, because it will be a, a later press conference, it will be around... 5.40 West African time for you uh, in Lagos over in Nigeria and about 6.40 around this time here, we will have uh, the Director General of the World Trade Organization Dr. Ngozi Okonjo-Iwala as well as uh, her with the um, President and Chief Executive Officer of Yara International. Now Yara International is uh, a, a a fertilizer, it's a chemical company and they're obviously in the business of agricultural fertilizers and the like so it makes sense to have the head of this international trade body as well as a business looking to alleviate problems and create opportunities for greater alliance when it comes to tackling this global food crisis. So they're going to be joined by the head of the World Economic Forum. So the three of them is expected to be a very, of course, important but fiercely contested uh, press conference to be able to, to get in on and hear what plans they have for the future because here we are talking about a global food crisis and that is hitting everyone across the world but if we hone in specifically to Africa across the continent definitely in Nigeria we are seeing that purchasing power of consumers is obviously dwindling because of this rise in food prices and there are many things contributing to that not less the war in Ukraine after Russia's invasion and the fact that Ukraine have been unable to service their usual export activities has meant that countries like Somalia, for example, have not gotten the grains that they need to create bread and the like. And that's obviously a situation across the world, not just in Africa, but it has a huge knock-on effect. So what happens now? Countries and businesses need to devise plans that mean that they are better protected should geopolitical tensions change the norm? And that's exactly what we've seen um, with this invasion of Russia into Ukraine. And that's exactly why the NATO Secretary General talked about global leaders being more intentional about trade, saying that freedom is more important than free trade because if it's not more important, you'll find countries in a situation where they are overly reliant on a country like Russia's energy resources and then face the prospect of being turned off or switched off from their energy and gas uh, pipes because of international sanctions. That's obviously what we've been seeing with Finland, for example. And what NATO want more countries to do is to posit position themselves better so that they can take more uh, control over themselves. And that's another reason why the climate conversation is going to be important. It'll be interesting whether or not the Director General of the World Trade Organization talks about climate change and how, if any, what effects it will have on international trade in light of current events. But it is going to be very, very interesting. I told you, I've been fighting very, very hard, tooth and nail, to get into these press conferences, sit in the front row so I can hear what's happening, so I can let you know what's happening, Rose. And I hope you appreciate the effort. Yeah, I appreciate the effort. I, I caught a, a small 
a quick glance uh, to you yesterday, getting sneaking in somewhere there in the back of the hall in one of the sessions, uh, uh, we're getting the queue, and I know it's a whole lot of Davos could be very hectic. There's a whole lot going on at the same time, uh, trying to uh, sneakle in somewhere there in the middle of all the political leaders, fiscal policymakers, and what have you. It's not easy chasing them at any of the event, not the least the world, high profile uh, World Economic Forum. Thank you so much. Let's talk about NATO calling for more intentional behavior when looking at global trade in the light of recent events in uh, Russia and Ukraine. What does that mean? So they want people to just think. <laughs> think. As I said earlier, the Jens Stoltenberg said that countries need to be be able to put themselves in a position where they realize and understand and actively perform as though freedom is better than free trade. And it's not just about grain and food prices as it pertains to Russia. There's also technolo technological advances like 5G and the ramifications that can create if relations were to sour with China, for example. And then there's also the, the prospect of military weaknesses off the back of conversations, again, connected to, te to technology. So what NATO want countries to do is, again, think before they act when it comes to free trade and learn the lessons from what we're seeing as it pertains to the energy crisis and this food crisis to avoid situations where countries are going to be at the beck and call of uh, countries that the international community may not be happy with as it stands now. And so still talking about security on an international front, there's also going to be a need for, again, the climate crisis to take another forward move. Now, earlier, before coming to you, I sat in on a press conference that had... Um, members of a coalition that are seeking to join private sector companies into becoming obviously more locked in when it comes to climate. Bill Gates was in on that meeting, John Kerry too, and representatives from different countries. And it was interesting to see what plans they have for the future as it pertains to protecting the world from the changes of climate, because it's not something that people can ignore. It has business and economic ramifications. It's not just an environmental issue. And talking about the environment against the backdrop of threats of nuclear violence, that obviously has a negative effect on the environment. So again, looking at security, these are the different tenets of why NATO, through its Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg, kind of had very awakening words for the international community. Mm. As I said, in his words, freedom is better than free trade. Okay, uh, we'll be looking forward to hearing more Nigerian voices uh, at, the, uh, at the summit at the World Economic Forum. Thank you so much, uh, so much Adifemi. Uh, I can say yeah, we'll be uh, get hearing more from you, from all you're putting together for us there from Davos. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your day.